Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the WGL EU Season 2 for 2015 and 2016. If you've just joined us, yes, make no mistake, we've already had one game out of the way. A 30-minute match where Kazakou absolutely demolished their opponents. Very, very impressive stuff. A rusty roster really didn't seem to have any answer to the questions Kazakou were asking. No, exactly. I mean, we were talking about this uh, just between the break. It seems like Kazakou have got themselves sorted. They are starting to improve again and they're back on form. So I'm hoping they continue this trend because, of course, you know, a disappointing season one last season. Um, and they're looking to be a bit more dominant, you know, in that top three spot for the entirety of this uh, 11 match day. So impressive stuff by them. Rusty Ruster, of course, you know, a new team. Probably a little bit disappointed, you know, that, of course, weren't probably looking to beat Kazakou or weren't expecting to beat Kazakou, but maybe a few rounds would have been good. Absolutely. And getting 2 0 on maps that they're picking as well is, is never an easy thing, of course, for the Polish side. And that second map was very convincing, a ghost town where one that Kazakou didn't really opt for that much last season, didn't seem like it wasn't a pocket pick. Again, here, they didn't choose it, but they just had a good understanding of how to play it as well. Really, really impressive stuff from them. But moving forward, it's going to be Strong Siema going up against Oops Di Tafin Gerafin here. And uh, I mean, this is Strong Siema, a team who struggled last season, got ninth place, uh, yep. some ups and downs. They had some great results towards the end, but they were few and far between. Now, Oops as well, qualifying through the open qualifier, didn't mm -hmm. actually make it through the relegations here as well. So if you were to see these guys, you'd probably see them at the bottom of the league. And that's nothing against them. It's just the way that they entered through. However, uh, you know, Oops... Uh, they had to play against Tornado Rocks in their first game as well, and they did get those two rounds. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they did okay. I thought there was actually quite a, f a few closer rounds there, but maybe Tornado aren't quite on form after what we saw of them yesterday against Synergy. A little bit careless, a little bit hat-handed with some bad tank lineups, some bad picks, some bad uh, movements. So you have to see exactly what Oops can do uh, against a more... Um, a more you know lower team. Let's be honest here. I mean, Tornado Rocks definitely one of the better teams right now, sure. technically. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think with Oops, they definitely deserved a place through the relegations. They came very close to doing so. They just fell out that last hurdle also, you know, going for the Silver Series almost felt, almost went through there as well. So super close stuff from them. I think they want to be contentious contenders this season. I think they want to be a good team. I think they'd be doing the, their homework. So they have a good chance against this Polish powerhouse. And yeah, there's a lot to be said as well, uh, you know, for, for Strong, having spent a season in the WGL Gold Series and not being relegated out. They managed to fight well enough at least to stay in there, although it was a very very shaky start to the season for them now they've had some time to sort of think about things you know yeah. in the uh, in the post season or pre-season of course for season two and come back now a little bit stronger uh, unfortunately things didn't start well for them either getting five zeroed by uh, wombats on tanks tough them both of these teams their first matches have been against the top two teams yeah exactly i mean super hard um but then again, this is how it works. And, you know, let's be honest here, Wombats on Tanks had a slightly closer round than um, in the previous one against Rusty Rosta. I mean, it was slightly closer. It was not like a full stomp 5-0 like Kanza Crew just did. But yeah, I mean, Strong CM are probably a pretty disappointed with that result. Um, if I was to guess, I mean, technically I should go for Strong CM because they are, you know, supposedly the, the more... You know, broken in team, they've got more experience. But then we don't know, A, you know, how really they're performing in 768, both these two teams, because they're playing against those top teams. Yep. We don't know how much practice they've done before this season necessarily. And um, that's going to be some fa some factors to keep into account here. First match going to be mine, so it's going to be interesting. Absolutely. I mean, we don't really have a lot of data from these two teams, especially Oops as well. Important to note, though, as well, that during relegations, all of the teams that were in the, <clears throat> excuse me, the gold series originally dropped out. Yeah. So, I mean, these new teams coming up, just because they weren't in the Gold Series last season doesn't necessarily mean they can't fight with the best of them. Yeah, for sure. But I think as well, as it's good to keep in mind that, you know, No Mercy and ASAP, for instance, they were they were almost going to drop out by default. I mean, ASAP just simply wasn't ready for the Gold Series. And No Mercy just seemed to fall off towards the end. They, they just had so many issues. So I have to see exactly how um, they're going to stack up against, um, you know, how these two more deserved teams in some respects are going to do because a trend we've seen since since the very beginning of the WGL is that there's always two teams who fall off always two teams you know always 11th and 12th or or 9th and 11th yeah. and 12th three teams who just don't seem to get the results and have significantly worse uh, time in gold series than all the rest well it's early very, very early to sort of tell who is going to be those teams here but you're right there's always a gap between the top six and sort of the bottom three uh, Melly uh, we have seen a bit of strong CMA now, and so have people at home. 
always, of course, having uh, the advantage of having a strong following in their Polish fans here. So the votes are open, of course, and with only three codes being won in the last game, it, you know, people surely must be seeing that just putting your vote in gives you a decent chance. Absolutely. I mean, um, when we come back to the thing that Polish teams have a strong following, we know that. We've, we've seen that in, in the past where lower teams, well, at least on paper, yep. got even the better vo voting result yes. than the p uh, teams that uh, clearly prevailed from the paper, uh, on the pay-per-view. But still, 67% is a bit few for strong Siema circumstances. Two-thirds. It, it's okay. It's more than 50%, which gives them the favor, of course. But if we have a close look to the entries, People at home are saying, sending us the predictions for the scoreline. It's going to be a tough one. It's a, a lot of 5-4 predictions. A lot of 5-4s. Well, we were walking in here as well saying we should probably dig in for what's going to be a bit of a longer game. We expect this one maybe to not be as one-sided. And it's just that All these two teams, as, as far as we know, are you know, potentially pretty even. In fact, from what we've seen from them anyway, we've seen only a little bit, of course, uh, from both of these guys this season. But oops, you know, coming in, there's always the unknown factor. There's always the dark horse factor. We we don't have much information. It's hard to make predictions. Obviously, those at home as well may be more voting with their heart than with their minds sometimes, mm -hmm. which is pretty commonly what we do see. But like you said, Oliver, minds is going to be our first map here as well. Um, you know, oops, neither of these two teams were the great sort of start to the week here. So a chance for them to sort of now show us a little bit more what they have. I mean, it's hard to sometimes execute your strategies against a team who is just so good at shutting you down. Yeah. Both of these guys have had to deal with that. So minds, of course, it's oops will be starting in the south here. Who will go for the hill? Who will go for the island? Will we see teams pushing over towards that eastern side and try and snake their way through? We haven't seen too many successful pushes through this village here, but maybe, just maybe one of these two teams has something that we haven't seen yet before. Strunk in the red side there in the north, and Oops will be defending from the south here as well. Looks like at least Oops aggressively moving towards a hill here, and Strong sitting well back here. Well, yeah, Strong doesn't have the fastest medium tanks, so I, I expect them to sit back. They've got the artillery, so they want they, they will be wanting to keep Oops at bay, so they can use that artillery to actually you know, pump out some damage in the F4 area. Shiwa is just going to come off really first. Shell does come out, actually just span, uh, uh, splashes Duck of Death, and I think you'll see Oops starting to make their way up the hill, but Right now, if Strong Siemer can keep them here, this will definitely go in their favor with that T110E5. This is quite interesting here. Sturoy is one of the top damage dealers for Strong Siemer up against one and Tanks. He's going to be playing in that Lorraine 15551. So he'll be doing some artillery work here. Duck of Death has already taken some damage here. And you can see the Oops are really quite nervous about pushing up on towards this hill. They're duking out a lot of the shots that are coming in towards them to start with. This is not a terrible position to be, but they'd surely love to try and control that hill. Look, steroids can continue to put damage just like that down towards them if they don't move fairly soon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the perfect position. This is exactly what Strong CMO wanted to do. Have those uh, medium tanks go below and uh, use the artillery and the T110 to do some damage. If I was Oops, I would have just uh, bit the bullet and just gone up the hill, sending a batch at first. So hopefully a few shells just hit the tracks or just don't do any damage at all. So right now, it's definitely going in favor of the Polish team. They are making it work for them. Even more damage coming out from Stu Roads. Actually just not doing anything there, to be honest. But let's see what the secondary plan is. You know, obviously, Oops playing on the defensive side. Duck of Death now heading down towards the south. Looks like Oops in general will be wanting to set up for a more defensive few minutes. Now, this reminds me a lot of the first match day of Season 1. It was Team Supreme versus ASAP. ASAP coming from the south, and they didn't push the hill. They got very, very nervous. And Insane must be having flashbacks right now, of course, coming from ASAP. Yep. Because Oops now have just stalled out completely. They're afraid to come forward. They're stuck on the hill. And Steroids is able to do so much damage towards them. You can see now, it's still fairly close in health points, and there's some initial shots coming out here. And at the end of the day, Strong Siemer do have to come forward at some stage, whether that's around the side or straight through the middle. Notice as well that Oops don't have a lot set back in K3, K4, just the one tank there. We often see some teams even go with three tanks there, just in case someone pushes in from the east. So they're quite committed towards that center part of the map, but not fully because they're not on that hill. So they can't really put much pressure on Strong Siemer's tank sitting, tank sitting back. I like So the STB-1, the T-62A as well, who aren't all, all completely on the hill. They're just sort of lined up on the, uh, on the slope. Yeah, so right now, I mean, it's all the onus is on um, Strong Siemer to push forwards. They've done decently at the beginning here, but you can see Invictus and Sane are now safe uh, from Stuart's artillery. 
so they don't have to worry about that. But, you know, they've put themselves in a worse position if, if speed does go forwards. Because Strong Team has the STB1 on the island, they will be able to get... Um, he will be safe from the right from the left side, which is, of course, where he'll be shot from. But no artillery as well from... Oops, um, you can see that in the, that in the lineup. Line they've gone for two uh, T10s, which, of course, the uh, the replacement slash remodel slash rename of... Uh, the IS-8, the Tier 9 Russian heavy tank. More damage going towards Guzio. He's got to be careful playing that T-62A. Slightly superior turret to uh, the 140, and that's why they have. Well, that's why these teams have been choosing it. Yeah, but really, though, to be honest, we see the 140 being picked up so much more frequently than the 62A. It's maybe just one thrown in here and there for a lot of these teams. Speed now moving forward. So what's the hull down sort of in this little crevice between the rocks? You see he's just angled his tank oh so slightly. Steroids as well. Still letting everyone know that he's alive and he's uh, still looking to do damage there. Speed able to push forward, get free damage towards Damnus there as well. And Insane also being punished for pushing forward. So Strong Siemer just going bit by bit here. Duck of Death is sitting well back in that K4 area and he's actually done a decent amount of damage here. But by and large, neither of these two teams have really taken a distinct advantage. It's very back and forth. Oops may be looking worse for wear overall, Damnus being as low as he is. This might be a little bit of a slower conclusion to this first map here, but that's a big hit towards Damnus. 503. Steroids is racking up the damage, man. Yeah, he's playing very well in that artillery piece. Speed is in a great position as well in the T110. He can he can punish Fussy Eaton and say, and he's got both of them locked down. He's also got Damnus locked down. And, uh, you know, it's just waiting for the Steroids to come on reload. But Invictus on the side there in the Object 140. See what he does. But Hunter Sword is basically just uh, completely going to lock him down. He's going to get the first shot. He's going to get the first spot. And uh, that'll be bad news for the solo player of Invictus. I mean, uh, we can see that Oops need to deal with Steroids ASAP. He really needs to be dealt with. He actually has been lit as well. He's been spotted, but so is Invictus as well. Luckily, he's able to turn aside Hunter's Lord's first shot towards him. Steroids doesn't look like he's really moving. Another good bounce there from the Object 140. These two might be doing a bit of back and forth for a little while as well. And Steroids, no immediate pressure on him because Hunter's Ward is there to protect him. And Invictus can't really advance any further forward. So back towards the middle of the map here and Fussy has taken in another big hit. Oops are trying to get themselves out of this sort of situation. Maybe getting speed out of the picture might allow them to move forward a bit more. Insane just needs to put one more shot and he's got three in the chamber as well. So he just he's being very careful about it as well though. He's trying to make sure that he penetrates every hit that he goes for. Speed is just readjusting his position now. Steroids, yeah, another shot. No damage off that one, but he is low. Well, I think um, Strong CM has had an advantage at least, and they should have pushed it. It should have gone forwards. Steroids has really done as much as he can do at this point in time. There's been a lot of uh, time past six minutes, and, um, you know, it's time that Strong CM actually go for it. Otherwise, Speed might eventually fall. There goes Speed. Finally drops down there. And what have, you know, Stroxima really achieved with him right now? They've kept Oops quiet. They've kept him at bay. But now look at this. Catch Me and Hunter Sword both going to go towards Invictus right now. This could be very, very dangerous for the man. Just around the side, he is shot in towards him as well. This is not good for that 140. He can't win the, the 2v1. There's no way. And here we off the map there. Now, what, what uh, I guess Oops should be doing is maybe pushing through the middle or something. They're, they're on the move. They're, they're looking like they're trying to get in position here. But you can see that Invictus is gone. Yeah, he's absolutely game over right now. Um, I think that should have probably come out a little bit quicker, but you can see Oops actually trying to react on this one, going up the hill, but uh, Strong Team have got a good crossfire. Fussy Eater able to back away and get a shot towards Ahoyek as well, but Oops are low. 3.2k health for them here, and one tank down. They have to defend, though, so if they can just hold on a little bit longer and force a move from Strong Team, you can see they're now starting to group together a little bit. The movements for those medium tanks on the hill. Looks like we're going to see three go back around the corner towards their capture point number two. And Dark of Death is sitting back, but now he's chosen to come forward. So no longer in a position where he can really snipe at those tanks, trying to come around the side or go towards the island. And Oops are gathering their forces in the middle here. But this might hurt them if they try and contest any sort of capture attempt because Strong Seamer can, can start that cap off from a safe point right now. There's no line of sight between the hill and that capture point number two from where most of Oops are set up. And they won't be able to see this one coming as well. Maybe even a flank around the side. I don't think that anyone in Oops is in a position to proxy spot Hunters or push around the corner here. So he'll get at least one shot for free. Yeah, he's going to be able to get a good little uh, bit of damage. He's going to get a couple of shots for free. Oh no, Damnus right on the uh, on the back with that uh, T110 with that uh, T10, but you can see the STB uh, is also there in the background, and Duck of Death might get caught out. 
Ducker just tries to come forward and take out Hunter Sword, but there was another tank there as well. This is looking very, very bad for Oops now. A good flank around the side, and Hunter Sword went low, but Catch Me was there. That was the unknown element, the unexpected element for Oops, and they walked straight into that one. They're going to have to push towards him now. They know they have to, but Insane getting tracked up is really going to hurt him. Still, he manages to pick up Hunter Sword and go towards Catch Me. He has plenty of shots to use here, but it's just Insane left here. Great work by Strong Sierra. Very methodical, really, the way they picked this one apart. They had advantages, they lost them, and they gained them again, and they're going to get the round. Yeah, good game by Strong Sierra. A little bit slow from them. They were good to react in some situations. They could have reacted a little bit faster, but yeah, they got it done. They had a strategy. They knew how to play it, and they made it work. Absolutely. Neither team really getting up onto that hill at any point. Now, the issues that Oops was, was suffering from in this round, i.e. just not sort of being held in place and not able to get out there, Stu Royds as well, putting down a lot of damage from, from where he was positioned. Can you, if they had taken the hill, could they have overcome that? Could they have actually done a lot more? Would there have been more flexibility or room to breathe with their strategy? Yeah, I think so. I think they had to take the hill. I mean, at the end of the day, the perfect strat I mean, at the end of the day, Strong Siemer could play the strategy they wanted to play because Oops didn't get the hill. Yeah, okay, they might have received some damage, but we've seen bat chats, or at least one bat chat, get up the hill before it's too late when you're playing on the defensive side. I think that was a necessity to have one tank up there and just keep control of it. Otherwise, Stu Rise would just pound you down slowly but surely. Quite slow. I mean, I think as soon as that 140 of Invictus was spotted, it should have been immediately Strong Siemer just taking him down. Uh, speed dies in this situation to Fussy Eater. But, I mean, the damage from Stuart is really, really impressive. 2,072 with one kill from him, obviously, against Duck of Death at the end there. So he got it done. He made it work. And, uh, you know, great win. And if that, that, that's going to be the moment, uh, you would know this as well, as an artillery player where you're just loving life. Mm. You're protected and your enemy is held in place. Yeah. They can't move and you don't really have to try and to do too much guesswork to know where they're sort of going to. This was Invictus and a decent idea from Oops, really. Maybe coming a little bit too late in the piece, but Hunter Zord always would have been there. He didn't move that whole round. His job was to defend steroids. So Strong Siemer doing everything right. Just, you know, keeping Upas under their thumb and then able to damage them as well. And artillery damage is free damage because you can't fire back in an artillery if you haven't if you haven't spotted them when they're getting information being given to them by their team. Yeah. And our minds as well is a map that we've seen that artillery use become very, very prevalent. And it's just for this reason now. So, I mean, even from, from either side, you can really do it. It looks like Stu Royds is going to go with artillery again. Even now, obviously, they're, they're switching sides towards the defensive one here. But winning the attacking round has been very, very fortuitous for Strong Sierra now. Oops have to respond. Uh, it seems like while these teams may not have done a great amount of stratting against each other or training, at least Strong Sierra have come out with a, a bit of a cover all plan, a decent idea, and the fact that Oops refused to take the hill definitely was just a big boon to them. Yeah, for sure. Let's see if they can improve the next time round. We're going to go on to the second round here on Mines. Uh, Oops, of course, now on the attack and uh, Strong Sierra on the defense. So. For me, Strong Sierra, they're, they're, they're quite an adaptive team. They like to make those pushes on different angles. Um, I think the problems were a little bit slow to the chase. Let's see if they can f fix it this time around. Quite a strange setup from Oops um, with a lot of heavy tanks on the attack. Um, lends itself to hill pushes at some point in time. Fuss Eater surging forwards in that bat shot. And Strong Sierra do the same towards the middle. Yeah, and both teams with artillery. Most of Strong Sierra are actually going to go towards this hill. And they'll take it. They'll take it easily, but... Good setup here as well for, uh, I mean, Oops over on the island. They got a couple tanks there. Good show. Doesn't take much damage at all, though. But now, Strong Sierra going that one step further than Oops did. They have the kill, and they can work from there. Yeah, they do. They've got the hill under control. Insane in the background. Maybe Struroids will even be going for those uh, counter artillery shots because he really has nothing else he can shoot at at this point in time. Hunter Sword a little bit concerned, and I think generally um, Oops are slightly concerned. Uh, Strong Sierra slightly concerned that Oops are going to make their way around onto their backsides, which is why Strong Sierra are starting to come off that hill and head down towards the south a little bit. But yeah, good start for Strong Sierra. I like their positioning. Cap, though, underway in that IS-7 of Genghis. So, uh, well, Strong Sierra needs to do two things. They need to get control of uh, K4, and they need to move the artillery in a position where it can reset. Well, it's a decent wrap for Oops. I mean, they've, they've already got towards that southern island, so they have a lot of control over that same side of the map as they capture point number two. There has to be a response coming out here, uh, I mean, from, from Strong Sierra at some stage. They can't just allow this to continue happening. Speed can't hull down towards the cap. It's just far too much of a, uh, an angle down. So he can't really do much from there except keep that IS-7 proxy lit. Yeah. A few tanks down at K3, K4, though, that can mm -hmm. make the resets. Yeah, exactly. That's what's going to happen. He's drunk steroids very fast in that Lorraine. He can get the reset um, if he really wants to. Of course, he can't go any further left than he is already. 
but I think he'll be able to get the splash at least. Of course, you know, he, Genghis is playing in that of water, so splash damage is very, very mitigated indeed. Oh, he's actually just slightly out of the water, so yeah, he should be able to get the splash here, stewards. Uh, oh, important to note, I think uh, the, the yellow names mean that tank has been spotted by the uh, opposition team, I believe. Yeah, that's a feature of the, uh, the, op uh, the OBS mod, which our observers seem to just enable. So uh, at least now you know we as well. We didn't have it yesterday. No, we didn't. We haven't had it before. So that's kind of nice to know. You can see Andre is every now and then being lit, but Genghis and obviously Speed proxy spotting each other now. So, I mean, not too much stress right now for Strong Siemma. It's a slow cap, slow build here as, as Genghis is just sitting there. And they're able to put some damage towards him as well. When there's only one tank capping, uh, your shots towards him always reset up by that much more as well. If there are multiple tanks and the other tank has accrued capture points of their own, harming only one of those two tanks won't actually slow it up as much. So... Strong CM have a minute here to, I mean, to continue really to try and reset if they can. That's that, they don't really have to do too much. As long as they can reset safely and consistently, they shouldn't be worrying about anything. But do, they do need to be careful if Oops want to go for some sort of push. But seems a bit strange to me, really. There's another reset. Hunters saw beautiful stuff there. Genghis, in fact, maybe it was HE towards him, I think. Yeah, it wasn't Steroids. He uh, tried to go for silence in the background, the FE2 on 5B. But yeah, this is a game of, of attrition right now. Back and forth. He assumes they're shooting, but of course, you know, Strong Siemer, they have the artillery in the in a perfect position to reset. So Stewrights has only really got to be concerned about counter artillery, you know, insane in that M40, M43. Can of course, you know, get a good splash on him, but reset stopped. Um, speed is keeping an eye on Genghis so he can jump over whenever he wants to. So Stewrights is going to be more about damage now than anything else. Genghis has actually backed off the cap just a little bit. He's now just now inch forward onto it. So he, um, he's he been sitting out in the open for this whole time and actually had moved back. So don't know what the plan is there, really. And uh, you can see that Strong Seamus still seem fairly content for the moment. Uh, I saw Genghis take about 47 damage there. So a little bit of a splash towards him. That, uh, as you said, might have been from Stu Rhodes there. No, actually, that's being HE being fired by Hunter Zord. Um, just to keep getting the reset here. So good response here from Strong Seamus. They know how to deal with this situation. And... With such heavy tanks and such, I guess, passive positioning here for the most part from, from Oops, I mean, there's no immediate threat to Strong Siemer in their defensive lineup in terms of getting pushed onto or something like that. So I, I really think that Oops need to go for something else or at least find another way to apply pressure or to uh, do something on another side of the map and keep Strong Siemer on their toes. Exactly. Um, there, there is no pressure being put on Strong Siemer. The, 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 the timer is simply just ticking down. I mean, we're halfway through the match already. You got another two minutes on the on the cap, basically. Strong team are starting to pull their tanks together here. Catch me and Andre joining Huntsal once again. Stewrides looking for the peak onto Invictus. Nothing happening so far, and I guess you know the problem would be for Strong Siemer would be okay. So if Insane gets one nice shell in his M40, M43, lands it onto one of those Object 140s, he's going to get like 900 to even maybe a one shot onto those tanks, which of course would open things up very nicely for Oops but he hasn't been able to connect it. Because of Hunter's Zord uh, getting so close up to that hill as well, the M40, M43 doesn't have the arc to actually hit him right behind that rock. In fact, many artillery don't. So, you know, Hunter's Zord can stay quite safe there as well. You see, and he's not being punished for poking out and getting the shot, um, ironically enough. He's only taken one penetrating hit. I'm sure he's been shot at right now, but none of Oops are actually able to, uh, to punish him for getting any resets. So, back at we go. Much, very much a slower game than what we saw earlier on tonight here. And, not much pressure again being applied. Having one tank in the cap isn't enough here. Maybe Oops just don't feel confident about breaking through the setup that Strong CM have. But, you know, Aho, Yek, and Guccio as well, they're set up on the hill. So, I mean, any any moves from Oops now are going to be punished apart from what they're doing. They, they need to find a way to come from a different angle, unseen or at least undetected for, for a small part. But they're out in the open. They're all spread on this side of the map. Again, Genghis now, actually well. loses his driver there with the HE. It was obviously very, very good at doing damage towards those crew members here. And it's been reset yet again. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to continue getting reset. I mean, they're only utilizing Hunter's Zord right now on the Object 140. They're not utilizing even Steroid. So they keep Steroid safe from counter battery and uh, just using that uh, Object 140 continuously. Um, so, yeah, again, nothing much to say. I mean, Strong CM are just holding fast. Of course, they could decide just to push in, thinking that they maybe have the advantage. But so far, that's you know not the case. They're not, any, not, not particularly ahead in terms of HP, about 100 ahead. So it's not like they should really push in. This is an extraordinarily slow game from these two teams. Well, Genghis again on the cap. The reset's coming in. 
And yeah, it's, it's, it's slowed up a lot. I mean, in fact, it's kind of always been at this pace the whole time. This is not how you capture a point, by the way, for those at home wondering. You need to do something about it. Now, uh, Dark of Death is moving up in that 110 E5. <clears throat> Maybe to try and challenge out speed there and punish him for being out of spot gangers for the entire game. But, I mean, the thing is, oops, I don't need to capture or kill all strong Siemer. Neither of those really seem very likely at this stage. We've got only two minutes and 40 seconds left or approaching that point. Yeah. And Duck of Death now will be punished with Aho, yeah, Kagucho so was sitting on the hill the whole round. Silence is just coming up with Duck of Death. It's the two tier 10, so they could actually push the hill. They could take down the object 140s. The problem is they got speed in front and they got the two 140s behind and Fussy Eater needs to do something about that. I mean, Troxy Emma want this to happen. They want Oops to try and push up here. You can see Genghis is slowly even moving around the corner here as well from the low ground, but he's taken so much damage. Now, insane though, picked up Ahoyek with a great shot. Guccio's left on his own on the hill, but speed is still up for now. Fussy Eater almost trying to fire up and hoping that he pokes over. Speed will drop in a second, but Troxy Emma still keeping it fairly well together. Still have six tanks. No chance for a capture now from this point, at least not with one tank. So, catch me and Struroids in the background. Struroids now has to be a little bit more careful. It's because there are targets on the move here. It's going to be a little bit harder. Now, Hunter Zord and Andre are still in the back corner here as well. Just trying to stay safe for the moment there. But there's the pick on towards Fussy Eater. And Oops are really running out of gas here as well. Plan A didn't work. Plan B doesn't look like it's been thought through that much either. The Strong Siemer are just happy to play it slow after winning that attacking round. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Oops obviously had a very clear mission of what they wanted to do. But the uh, steroid artillery plus the HE ammo is just a little bit too strong right now. And uh, they managed to take care of it. Good sh good uh, work by Insane though. I mean, he kept them in the game for sure. Uh, with that one shot, I believe, or, or you know, good amount of damage onto the object 140. That's you know, kept them slightly in this game. But still, two versus one again for Invictus. And yep, yeah, he's been here before, I feel like. Uh, Andre and Catch Me are going to be able to come around the side. And Catch Me having to avoid some of the shots coming into him from the hill. But... They were able to deal with Invictus in due course, and that leaves Oops with only three tanks left, and two of them are incredibly low. One of them is a piece of artillery, so we're only just a bit over 1,500 points between them. Silence is coming forward looking for something, but one minute left in this one. Oops have run out of time here, there's no doubt about it. You just can't make something happen now, especially at such a deficit. Andre and Catch Me are quite vital as well. They're quite healthy. Silence can see Hunter Zord, at least. But he doesn't still... Steroids has been completely un, untouched this whole game. He's been able to do whatever he wanted. Silence gets a piece on Hunter Zord, though, but they catch me. Shot in from the side of the island. Andre is there as well. And a slow a slow burn, a slow finish to this game that has also been slow. Had a, oops, a little bit lacking in inspiration, perhaps. I, I honestly thought maybe one or, one or two of the players from Oops managed to disconnect or something, because for me, there's no logical reason why they would not move from those positions and try something else. Obviously, that just wouldn't have worked. So it's just a bit of a strange um, a strange game from them. Of course, Steroid's going to land that shell very accurate at this range, the Lorraine 155551. And um, yeah, I mean, Strong Siemer congratulating, congratulating um, Insane on his uh, impressive artillery skills and where he landed that M40, M43 shot. First time we've actually had a timeout here as well. Well, I think, no, second time that we've had this, uh, this uh, last yep. four days. And yeah, I mean, I think from the very beginning when the first couple of HE rounds from the Hunter Zord hit that IS-7, we already knew the conclusion of this match. And that's the thing. You, you have to think if we know, then, then Oops know as well. They realize this isn't sustainable. We aren't putting enough pressure on them. I mean, it's purely putting a tank on uh, the cap isn't enough in mines because your opponents can still fire from very safe positions, mm. undetected for the most part as well, with bushes in the way. So, I mean, looking here at some of the damage being done, I mean, insane with good damage, 2.1k. And Steroid's actually doing less than him over the course of the game, but with two kills, so. Yeah, I mean, this is what you need to do. You need to put the I-7 in the cap. You need to have your object 140s push over the island. You have the artillery in the background. You get the um, the 140s into a position where they can shoot, and the 140s sitting uh, in, that, in, the, in that bush area, which can shoot Genghis. Then you have those 140s proxy spotted at minimum, which is great for insane, because A, you can shoot the ones that are exposed, yep. and B, the ones that expose realize that they have to get, get into cover, so they're not so free to to, uh, to peek and get the shots onto your IS-7 who's capping. It, of course, means you need to have some sort of control over the middle, so you keep a 110 back quite far, which means it can shoot the tanks that are going up or keep control of that, uh, keep control of those 140s or bat shots on the hill. So none of that really happened, and um, yeah, that's, that's just bad news for Oops. How does Orton catch me here as well? Didn't have to do uh, too much crazy stuff here. And you can see the only names that are in yellow here is, is Speed and Genghis. So, you know, Hunter Zord can actually come forward. He can take the shot and then back away and not be spotted at all. You know, even with those two tanks on that on that side island, Stroxima would take absolutely no risk to get these resets. Yeah. I mean, it's just 
they're more than happy to play this style. And Oops froze up. And when you have 10 minutes, you, the onus was on you to come up with a plan B, something else. I mean, this came so late in the game. And this was just Duck of Death. I think Silence was there as well, coming forward. But they lost out in the trades, and, and that was it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. They lose the, the trades here. Um, it's very easy for Guccio. There's also another 140 behind. Catch me. Uh, no, not catch me. I think it's uh, Andre. No, not Andre. Speed. Well, one of them, I don't know. One of the object 140s behind them. So it's, it's, it's a three versus three situation, but the 140s have three shots, and uh, this push in is just. It gets, them, it gets them into the three versus situation overall. I mean, but, you know, oops, have uh, no time left. They have the worst HP, the worst positions, and eventually steroids would just be able to pick them off. You see Genghis there pushing up as well. Uh, I mean, out of position. You you just hate being in that position in an IS-7 as well. The point is to be able to, to be able to sit sort of front on and, and bounce a bunch of shots while you're sitting on the cap and just be a, be a presence there. But when you have to come forward and you don't have teammates with you, you're just a beacon. You, there's just a big target painter on you there as well. And losing such a big and valuable tank in such a way without really having done any damage himself. I mean, Genghis did zero damage that whole game. So did Fussy Eater. Yeah, I mean, the only one who really was um, impressive was insane. He was the only one who managed to connect to Shell. He landed onto the back of Ojek. He probably wasn't a happy bunny there in his Object 140. But I mean, that 2.1k did more than, than Shu Rides. Um, yeah, I mean, that guy, we remember in the first game with, when ASAP played on this map, first round basically of the whole season, season one, he was also an impressive artillery piece. Yeah. So I think insane as artillery is always going to be a good call. Um, but yeah, moving on to Prokhorovka, this is a different kettle of fish. Um, could be where we, we see a comeback. From what we've seen, at least so far, uh, Strong CMR actually do want to play around the objectives a little bit. On mines, at least, you saw that they weren't, you know, doing a connect blood and wanting to go forward, even as a defending team. They were just happy to sit back and yeah. control the situation and just at least make sure that they could dictate who was going forward or, you know, have some control over the, over the flow and pace of the game. Here, Prokhorovka going to be the next map. Uh, a map that sometimes we just don't see that from teams at all here. We have to wonder as well, uh, both these teams seem to be happy to play heavier tanks. Um, Utopia favours the, the quite a heavy lineup here in Prohorovka. Neither of these teams really seem to want to go for that. We do always see an IS-7 thrown in the mix here and there as well as mm -hmm. someone who can soak up a lot of damage and deal it back themselves. But for the most part, it looks like Strong Sienna a team that we know that are super comfortable as as in heavy lineups, slow tanks moving forward and brawling it out. Actually going to go with quite a, a lighter lineup here uh, by the looks of things. Actually, no, it's Oops, should I say, going with uh, heavy STBs. Uh, both of them, really, actually. Pretty, so, pretty similar. Yeah, catering to, I guess, the map that Prohorovka is. Mm. Um I don't know. On the attacking side as well, it looks like it's going to be strong CMA to start things off. So that'll also be interesting to see how they start to try and shift things in their favor. Second time we've seen this map tonight already. We've already seen uh, a lot of work around that train line in the middle. It looks like a bit of an innocuous feature, but it actually plays a very, very, very important role in these games. Uh, and teams obviously pretty much drawing a line down the middle and taking one of those sides. But here comes strong CMA now spreading out towards that back corner. We often seen this as well, that the team that likes to push in from the south. This didn't work out for Synergy, though, because Rox had an incredible setup to receive them. Yeah, and also, you know, Strong CM using artillery, so they do need to pick a side and defend it. Um, interesting pick up with our artillery, for sure. I mean, the M53, M55 surely is the right decision because of its uh, firing arc. You can basically cover the whole of Prokhorovka. And uh, often on this map, there's, you know, like a 251 on some other part of the map, but the rest of the team is, is clumped to the, the rest of the enemy, enemy team is clumped together. So the onus is on steroids to hit these shells. Um, I like the counter, though. I think it can be effective against that artillery, um, against that uh, IS-7 or somewhere. And uh, if he can even connect a couple of them, he will be a lot more effective than insane. But so far in, in this season, and again, we have only seen three, uh, three uh, play days and one and a half match days so far. The 251 has been a beast. It's, it's been an extraordinarily strong tank um, with its heat ammo, with its heat HE ammo as well, taking out to care of Amex 1390s. So for me, I would prefer to be in Insane's position because it's the more reliable position to be in. Binos and Camonet there as well as opti Optics for Insane. So he's just definitely wanting to be able to spot as much as he possibly can, set things up for the rest of his team. Now, as shots were fired here as Hunter Zord came forward in the middle of the map, as he is that Object 140 that is doing most of the scouting right now, the rest of his team sitting back. So spotted and hit. Plus he had been lit as well and the shots coming in. So Hunter Zord has to be careful. Um, 
you know, he has to... I mean, this is a tough role, and this is... You'll see this in random battles all the time, actually. Like, you, you'll have your 3090s or your bat chats or whatever. We'll just do some scouting runs here and try and reveal the enemy as much as possible. But Insane, in that back corner there on the 251, it can be a real nuisance right now to Hunter Zord, who has to split his focus between going forward and scouting the enemy team and that getting shots in from that 251 from behind. So he actually might be in a bit of danger out there, and he has to pull back. So strong Seema, I mean, as an attacking team as well, at some point something's got to give. At some point they've got to come forward. You see, still lit. Huntersword still lit and still taking damage from Silence. Well, it's just a steroid factor, right? I mean, Huntersword wants to spot something for steroids. He wants to be going forwards and, you know, being the object 140, the more durable, smaller, harder tank to hit with a good, with a better ammo, uh, better armor. He is the right man for the job. A shot does come out, oh. connects nice little uh, splash there onto Silence, I believe, uh, or just a very, very low uh, damage roll. Of course, you know that uh, M53 and 55, 1.7k. 1,750 damage, so it can really do some good good work against the softer STBs. But two problems for Strong CM, of course, you know, the RU251 is one. The fact that they're in the attack and they're not being particularly aggressive is two. And, uh, you know, if they go forwards, like we saw yesterday between Tornado and um, Synergy, they're in the worst p spotting positions. Well, the more damage you can do as uh, an artillery or a tank, obviously the greater the variance is because there's a percentage of that uh, alpha value. So 1,850 damage, actually. There you go. So that couldn't have been a penetrating hit then. Yeah, exactly. Good splash, though. Obviously, the higher caliber your shell is, the, the more damage you get off the splash, the, the better that radius is. So that's why we even see those IS-7s picking up. But this is an interesting move here. Ahoyek and Catchby going right around. They just want to deal with Insane here, but Catchby taking a lot of damage. He has been lit, but this is not bad from Strong Sierra. I mean, oops, can't really fire... To, whoop, I'm wrong, actually. There's an STB up in the middle of the map here. So they can fire towards these two tanks, but... They have to crest a little bit to do so. We catch me being punished so hard for this. Yeah, I mean, this is a very responsible move. I mean, there's no need to send two of these tanks there. I think Ojek could have just taken care of that. And, you know, because Insane is, is a decent play. He's always uh, he's always going forwards. He's always spotting. He's always making sure that he has his back covered. And, of course, with that coated optics, he'll, he'll be able to get the job done. But, yeah, I mean, this is not going too well for Strong CMO right now. They've lost a lot of damage on um, Hunter Zord and Catch Me. Insane's also doing the right thing. He's pushing on to killing that RU251. Fussy to the middle with his STB as well with Silence. So really, they've got the overmatch 3-1. to one, And Catch Me has been spotted once again. He's dead, surely. He's in, well, he's in trouble anyway. There's a uh, firing squad ready to receive him as he pushes up the hill. He'll be vulnerable in just a moment. That should never happen. Really, really should never happen. One did lose so much health as well. No margin of error. Now, Strong Sam seem to be pushing up, though. But they have no idea what they're pushing into. And it could be from two angles as well. These two STBs setting up. Great response from Oops here. Stronger walking into a trap. Yeah, they are. I mean, for sure. They can have a hard time dealing with somewhere. In say, uh, um, Steroids has not really had any chance to get into this game. And in general, I mean, this has been super hard for Strong Sienna, but they are finally to get some damage back. And I think right now, you know, Stu Rides needs to be landing a one-shot, or, or very near to. Yeah, Fussy Eater takes a lot of damage there as well, so not too bad from Strong Sierra. They weren't really being punished. They, I mean, pushing up maybe 10 more meters, then would make them far more vulnerable to the guys on the other side. But now a little bit of a, a pincer, a bit of a flank around. Silence forced back as well, another shot in towards him. And this is okay, because now Strong Sierra can turn their attention to what's going to be happening on the western side now. But they're not. They're not looking, and Invictus gets free shots at him from behind. He's on the move, though, as well, so we can't really hit them uh, consistently. And you can see now, Stroxyema, it's like catnip for them, these two tanks. They're chasing after them. One to pick them up, but Guccio gets double tapped there as well. Invictus takes a big chunk of damage, but Stroxyema just showing their back to Oops there. Not only is it disrespectful, it's also very, very dangerous. Yeah, extremely dangerous. Did you manage to get across um, one of the two of them or one shot? So they're trying to get the overmatch, which I can see, but how much damage are they really receiving? And is it worth it? Ojek does take down uh, Insane there, so this is still going okay for Strong Sam, and they can still win this. Yeah, but well, losing a lot of health points there in that little fight, but Guccio takes down Silence as well, so they have that extra gun in the game. And now it might be Oops actually pushing in towards Strong Siemi here. Somewhere in Duck of Death, straight towards the train line. Not ad not advisable for them to go aggressive, but at least a shot towards Guccio should be able to finish him off. And they don't hit it. Duck of Death misses that one as well. And those two tanks are very, very lucky. They don't get punished even worse than that. Somewhere had the good frontal armor to bounce a lot of those shots coming in. But Strong Siemi are creeping up a little bit now as well. Struroids is about to get killed by the Batcher. He's been spotted. He's well and truly dead. He can't even turn around quick enough as well. So... It's not ideal. It's hard to say if Suroids really had a great impact. But, I mean, on the upside, Genghis is sort of out of the action, so he can't really help the rest of his team. And Stroxyema started to just posture around this one just a little bit more. It's a 4v3. Ahoyek as well is in a great spot to have free damage, free shots. But Invictus picked him up.
Yeah, they're actually going to push forward. Andre's got plenty of HP because Invictus is in that position, and Genghis has got two shells. He might be able to do some work from the background. Will, will it be enough? I don't know. And he'll think, be on reload, actually. Yeah, he's on reload now after taking that shot towards Andre. So they can actually gang up on towards Invictus here. Hunter Zord and Guccio are both there. Invictus does take that one hit. And he's not able to kill Guccio as well. So 3v1. Now, Genghis will have a full clip. He will have five shots or... Or thereabouts to uh, to use here. A lot of damage available to him. I mean, in an ideal world, he could take down all of these Strong Siemer tanks as well. But Strong, got to be clever about this one. Maybe go for a cap here. Force some movements here from this bat chat. Leave the STB one south, which is Gucho, who can at least spot out what's going on. Genghis doesn't know what's happening here. We can't see. And now he's going to be put under some pressure as well. He's going to be forced to move in towards the middle, and that's exactly what Guccio wants. But the thing is, right, if you've got two tanks capping and Genghis actually finds Guccio before he spotted... He doesn't have to find him. I mean, he can just push in and take down these two tanks. It's 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 a decent situation for Genghis because he knows where the tanks are. He knows which cap they're going to. So he knows... He's, in his head, he's already formulating his plan of attack. So it's going to be on... Um, it's going to be on Hunter Sword to do the damage in the background. Execution is going to be important right well, now. Genghis yeah. pushes forward. Guccio sees it first, so he gets a shot towards him. Genghis now does take that one here. He's forced to chase after Guccio. Now Guccio is just going to have to bow down and let that one happen. Genghis has four shots. He has enough to kill these two, but it's going to take all four of those shots. He has to connect them on. That's a big ask for the man as well, but he's going to have the time because neither of the tanks he's going up against are auto loaders in themselves. It's all about who gets the first shot. Now, one shot connects, one misses. Genghis going to get that aim down time, which is a little bit long on that batcher. One towards Andre. He's going to have a sec one ready as well. Went towards Hunter Zord. Going back and forth. He should have put two towards one tank. This next shot will be very, very important, and Genghis will have it. He should be able to finish this one off on his own. He's taking his time, and a one man army comes through. Genghis, a 1v3. Beautiful start. Stuff there, perfect from Oops, but a very close game. Yeah, I mean, individual plays uh, towards the middle of that game were just on par. I mean, Strong Siemer were so good in, in a lot of these situations, but I mean, it's just amateur mistakes there from Strong Siemer at the end. Um, having Gucci in two of an obvious position where you know Gengas can charge straight through the middle in the bat chat and still have time to deal with Gucci, that's just that's bad, that's a really bad play. I mean, Gucci has to be in an awkward position which Gengas can't just go A, B, A, B to. You know, he needs to be on the hill or he needs to be in a place where uh, he can get shots on easily without getting taken down. Or, or what about on that cap with the other two tanks? I mean, not only would that have sped it up, but it, it means that. Well, yeah, I mean, he could be on the cap with the other two tanks. It's all risky as well because, it, you know, that's all three tanks, eggs in one basket, or your eggs in one basket. Sure. But the thing is, he ha what doesn't matter where he is, he has to be in a position where he can help his friends very quickly, but also not be spotted straight away when he goes across. So uh, maybe a little bit lucky that he was in that position to spot him, spot Guzio. But yeah, I mean, just uh, not really thinking straight, perhaps letting that uh, pressure get on them, that limelight get on them a little bit. Um, and, you know, a fantastic shot there in the end um, to take down Andre in his, uh, in his, in his STB. Andre uh, probably should have just been peaking the whole time to force a re irresponsible shot from Genghis. Obviously, the bat chat with an, a low accuracy and high aim down time. But we can actually just watch this whole situation back. So it was before that even, I mean, Guzio probably should have just waited, bided his time, and then as soon as Genghis started to make his way towards the cap, then he comes from behind. He can even, even shoot the uh, HE ammo towards the back of the bat chat. This is a uh, bad positioning this because shot. Genghis was already spotted, so it's unnecessary for for even uh, uh, Andre to get this one shot here. Shells go, go towards him. Good idea for them to use HE because um, AP because HE can actually bounce, but then Andre should have already been uh, peaking that position. Um, and expect, you know, because Genghis was going forwards, he, he wouldn't have had the momentum. Four kills and 4,100 damage from that man. Cleanup crew personified there, really. One man able to do it all. I mean, I, there was 20 seconds left on the cap at that point as well. So, I mean, if you... Here's some possibilities, right? I mean, as we've been talking about, it could have had three tanks on the cap. It would have been a far, much faster cap progress as well. Would have forced Genghis to rush into three guns. That first shot from Andre missed, though. You see, yeah. if, the, if he'd hit that, it wouldn't. They would have been able to kill Genghis. It would have had enough damage across the line. Guccio could have been on the hill as well. Could have been on the north side of the hill or the south side of the hill. Sorry, just set up to see him come in from the side. Exactly. It would have been too much for Genghis now to because Genghis would have had to fight them all at the same time. Instead, he got a one v one, and then he got a one v two. But he, still he, four he, shots he, left. The thing is, he, he could kill all three. You know, because none of them auto, he could have killed all three. If they're all in one position, they could have all died. And because he had the higher ground, it's hard to be um, safe there. So, you know, I think it's hard. I mean, for me personally, I prefer to have one out the cap, one in the cap, because with even with four, three tanks in the cap, it's still pretty slow on, okay. on, uh, on attack defense mode. Well, been a couple of very, very uh, long rounds here. And these two teams, there's got to be a feeling that they're quite close together. They see these very, very close sort of uh, combinations to them now. Heading on to our next...
Prohorovka round. Stu Rhodes still with the artillery here. 54E1 for Hunters all this time. So going for a little bit of an audio load of flavor on that tier 9. And apart from that, Damnus and IS-7. Yeah, Damnus playing the uh, IS-7. The interesting thing is Hunter's Order, as you said, T54E1. We've seen that from Tornado Rocks. Um, 1.6k damage. Really small, short time between shells. So great against uh, in a lower HP batch at situation when you're going one versus one or two versus one. Uh, just extremely, extremely effective at pumping out burst damage. But insane with a pretty crazy little scout run there. And uh, he does get himself safe on the hill, so great positioning. And to be honest, I mean, I'd like to be in Oops' position because insane, he can get double bushes and he can just shoot down onto Catch Me Speed and Andre. Well, he hasn't seen anything quite yet from that position, but he will surely, as Strong CM will make their way across a little bit here. <clears throat> and uh, even uh, Stewart's position as well is a little bit vulnerable. There you go. Andre's been lit by Insane. He can see him. He'll take the shot and back off. Free damage is good damage, always. Now with uh, STB1 bat chat and of course 140 in the south as well for Oops here. They have a bit of freedom now. You can see uh, maybe they want to increase their control over the middle part of the map. They've sent a bat chat uh, of Fussy Eater out towards the field just to check what's there really. But Insane's pushed completely off this hill. He's just gotten the heck out of there. As there is a tank, I think, even pushing up that one. Andre slowly going up that hill. They got a 416 there as well. Yeah, um, 416, I mean, fantastic tank there. 320 damage. Can do a lot of work, but I'm not sure exactly why Oops is not just doing some work against Strong Team here. They've got so much opportunities. Damnus, though, heading forward in a danger position, that IS-7, so he can actually start uh, making something happen here. But Andre might just be able to find Genghis as well, who's sitting down there, as uh, there's no tanks on the cap anymore. There's no uh, there's no Fuss Eater, no Bat yet, but Oops heading towards the left side, giving up all their um, all the, uh, all the advantage they had. Why? And decided to uh, go from a different angle. I mean, why, why would they now... I mean, pulled out of that position. Didn't really seem like a bad one. Are they trying to, you know, maybe push a tank onto uh, the cap point number one and pull them across? It seemed like it wasn't a terrible position they were in in the first place. No, I mean, if you're in the north, um, you're definitely in the worst position than if you're in the south when you're on that right side of the train line because you have less um, cover. You're there slightly later. Um, the hill's harder to get and easier to peak in F6. So for me, I would have just gone for the exchanges. I mean, of course, you know, the problem is, is the uh, STBs, the T-54s, and the artillery in the background, but, you know, that's mitigated with the batchet on the hill. You can try and come back from that, but oops, heading up the uh, one to three line, are getting control over their cap, and I think they're wanting to be play a little bit like the Kaza Crew style when they are playing methodically, getting some pressure on the cap, and then just pushing forwards towards the middle. Now, Insane's been spotted, actually, as he made his way over towards the cap, so Strong Seaman know exactly where he is for the moment at least. Gucci was lit, the firing squad, like we've seen plenty of times before have set up here. And if Strong CMO maybe had those T110s, this could, could go a lot better for them. We've seen teams actually picking them up. I think it was Ding actually, with two T110E5s uh, as the defending team, did so much work and interrupted this cap completely. But Strong CMO don't have them this time. They got the STBs, that's, that's really all they have to work with here. A brawling lineup, not so much hull down. Yeah, but the problem is, I mean, the, the cap is always hard to take when you've got the other team with an artillery. I mean, that's basically a, a tank that's dedicated to decapping. Shuroi's already got seven damage onto Insane, which is enough to get the resets here. So great stuff from him. He's just going to be able to methodically go through the cap. He's got about three minutes to do so. Um, so this is a risky move, and you know, Oops might find themselves without any time, out any space, out any air to breathe. If they do continue with this move. The artillery an important factor, I guess, now, as Catch Me does take a little bit of damage. He's off in the middle of the map there as well, so still being spotted out. Damnus was also revealed for a moment there in that position with the IS-7, and, and here's two roids as well. So he's well and truly out of the action. He can see what's happening, but he's on the move here, so, um, you know, has to change position. Just make sure he's got the right angle for this one as well. Doesn't want to take too many risks, of course, as, as his M53, M55, because if he misses that shot, decent reload time, and he doesn't want to be put in a position where he just runs out of time. We actually saw that uh, the other night, I think, from one of the other artillery players who was just about to fire, but the cap was completed uh, before then. So, Steroids line this one up. He doesn't know where that bat chat is. I don't think it's been spotted, so he has to just make an educated guess. 
Yeah, so Stewards is uh, going to get some spots from Ojek, the team captain. He actually gets spotted with no information of his own, so Insane was behind that bush, and Ojek takes a hell of a lot of damage. Stewards has got a reply. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think the shot came in, and he does hit towards Insane. Perfect stuff for the man. That resets the cap. That almost, I mean, justifies Ojek taking so much damage just to get that spot over. As I said, these aren't 110 E5s at all. Just STBs. It's risky to do it. They're kind of squishy as well. Not a lot of great armor. Ojek there. Good little depression. Gets the spot, but Silas is going to go for the finish on him. Yeah, this is really bad from Ojek. He's going to fall, and Insane has still got a few seconds on reload. And Insane got pretty... Uh, uh, Stewards has got pretty unlucky because he could have actually one-shot Insane there. But yeah, two, two tier 10 tanks are half HP for one tier 10 tank being completely removed from the map. Of course, I'd prefer to have the former. But Silence receives another. Not great work from Stewards. I mean, he probably had to rush that shot because he knew the tank would go unspotted. Good share now, and Andre just trying to uh, decide whether they're going to push over now. But two tanks on the cap here for Oops, and pressure starting to mount. Speed now has to be the one to step forward and try and get some spotting done. This is the problem when you don't have tanks that can safely gain information. Now, this spot, Speed hoping to proxy spot someone maybe just uh, up on the other side of the hill, but he's got to commit. He's got to go in for this one here. Genghis takes damage, but he's not on the cap. Speed has to go for a reset his own damn self, and he does get it straight towards silence. It isn't punished for it. That's a lot better from Stroxiema, but this capture point's still ticking down now. So he needs a follow-up here coming in from Stu Roids, but his shot missed now. So another peak has to come from Speed. He misses that as well. 12 seconds left, and now well, who else is there to get the reset? Well, uh, at the end of the day, Speed is, can actually just push in and take him down, but Insane is what, looking for that one and Insane does come out of the cap, so of course that's going to go Why? a lot worse. But I don't know. I mean, Genghis, Duck of Death, and Damnus are all in the background just making sure that uh, speed can't peak. But this is the problem. I mean, oops are going to get shot by uh, by the artillery. Ones. I don't understand why Insane moved off the cap there as well. He wasn't in any danger because Speed had already missed his shot. He wanted to get rid of him. He's getting a little bit, I guess, ticked off by the STB one constantly peeking towards him. But they could have taken this capture progress so damn close. And now they pretty much squandered that opportunity. Fussy Gita at least takes down Catch Me. And Speed is still being an annoyance right now as well. Getting some good pokes up. This is going to cause damnness, force him to come across here and get involved. There's Speed. Takes one hit, bounces another. Doesn't actually manage to get his shot off in the way he would have liked, but he bounces damage the shot. This is great. Strong seam would chunk him down, but look at how much damage Oops have been able to do to them in the periphery. We haven't even seen that damage come across there, but it's been enough. And Speed is in deep trouble. Yeah, Speed is going to go down. Uh, but good little reply there from Hunter Sword in the T54E1. Two minutes and 30 seconds left for... Well, four tanks to find, three tanks to find, and this is... Uh, Oops actually starting to pull out quite a nice lead here. Fussy Eater's on the hill. He's been doing great work. And this is a very good chance for uh, Oops to uh, level the playing field. That's an amazing position from Fussy Eater, by the way. He, he has not even been touched. He's already destroyed at least one tank there as well. It's just perfect to unravel Strong Sierra. That's exactly what he's done. Amongst all the commotion happening over at that cap point number one, he was able to get in behind enemy lines, get in that key position, and just start to really hurt them. And Steroids has, has to await things now as well. He is unspotted for now, but Invictus is going to go the hard way. He's going to go across towards Yana, maybe do it. Stewards maybe doesn't even want to fire right now. But, I mean, his odds of remaining undetected here are, well, slim to none. He's been spotted now as well. So, he will drop down, try and have a shot. Won't connect that one as well. You can see all the traces there, or at least where everyone's aiming straight towards him. So, a matter of time before he gets picked up. And Fussy Eater caps off a fantastic game with the final kill there. Very nice work. Two and two here. Yep. Both these teams getting the straight two woes on those two maps. I mean, they're super slow games, man. Super, super slow. I mean, I'm probably going to have a beard by the end of it, but this is some close stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is kind of a strange situation where Strong CM are just really passive. They're not going forward. They're not making any moves, and they're waiting on Oops to make all the mistakes. I think Oops are starting to get in their stride here. They're starting to play better. They're starting to play a little bit more logically. And, you know, I mean, sending Ojek team captain forwards in his STB1 was, of course, suicide. Um, and then sending speed as well there in his ST bomb was again another uh, suicidal move. Fuzzy Eater just having so much room to breathe, playing around the map, getting himself onto the hill once again. Um, you know, he did the second highest damage, 2,336 and three kills. So, yeah, I mean, this is the thing. With his full STB lineup from, from Strong Siema, they don't have any fast and agile tank. You know, if they had a Batcha or an Object 140, it might have been a different story, but the STB is a little bit awkward to play. And uh, a lot bigger and easier to penetrate on the turret, even though two bounce, uh, just two, two just bounce there. So, Steroid, yes, he's in the artillery, but he's not as effective as he could have been. No, he uh, got about 1.6k damage done, which is about standard. What Pretty we're bad, from I think. And, uh, you know, Insane, he actually got lucky. I mean, one of the shells from Steroid hit the track. 
and it's a pretty easy shot. I mean, it's only a th three or 400, 300, 400 meters for, for steroids to hit those shells. He's played very well in the artillery this round, but maybe he just got a little bit unlucky on uh, Prokhorovka. Yeah, I mean, he, the damage done for him, while it is, is standard, given the situation that he had, the opportunity that he had to get free damage across, he got a bit unlucky. Maybe it didn't seem like he could really capitalize on it here at all. And those one shots from those artillery, a little bit few and far between from what we've seen, even when some of these teams are bringing those more lightly armored medium tanks into the fight. But now, we're four rounds in. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that voting has closed as well for your teams and your predictions to go in to win yourself a bonus code. And Melly, what are the standings? Currently, 63% uh, for uh, Strong. And Samuel actually um, tweeted us uh, saying, oops, we'll take it 5-2. Dropping the first map, 0-2, and then going 5-0. Currently, looks like it. Well, he was right about the Kazna scoreline. He predicted 5 0 for that one. Exactly. So we'll have to see. But he's a Kazna fanboy, though. I know that for a fact, <laughs> old mate Samuel. So, anyway, uh, time ticking down now. Cliff, the next one. Got to be very, very interesting to see, uh, you know, how what we've seen in the last few games translates in terms of the team's aspect or the team's uh, approaches to, or attitudes towards these maps. So, let's jump in, obviously, and have a look at Cliff. And uh, Strong Seaman now going to be starting from the south side on the attacking side. These two teams don't really want to brawl at all. So I'll be interested to see how they try and set up here on Cliff because there's so many opportunities for some beautiful crossfires and great holds, but it really depends on whether these teams actually are able to do it. More T62As coming in here as well. Two of them for Strong Siemer. Yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of T62As in the uh, training battles before the season. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more. Insane though, again, being picked up in that artillery. Shuroid's no artillery this time. Genghis gets damage towards him in that bat shot. Let's see if he can have a similar performance as he did in the previous round. Speed on the hill in the RU251, but it's been found out that uh, Strong Siemer are on that lower side, and Andre Kachmia and Guzio are going to head up into that uh, left middle area. And Speed has the hill, which is a decent position for them. Yeah, not often that we actually see teams push up towards that hill so early on. In fact, the only time we've seen this was really Kusok, and that was when he they had all the information and all the freedom to push up here. So good position, strong one for the 251 to have. And again, these two teams playing, both playing so passively. Yeah, but some damage just go towards Duck of Death. As long as Speed can play this correctly, I mean, technically, this should be Strong Siemer's game if, if he can really do some good damage. Ooh, that's, that's a brilliant shot there by Insane. Really, really perfect. That's put them in a totally bad position now. He's a one shot. Peaking will be a lot harder for him. And, uh, you know, Speed got very, very lucky that he didn't get one shot there as it just hit his track, I believe. And, uh, you know, positional play now by Oops wrapping themselves around, have the higher ground, have the better positions in a lot of respects, and Strong Team haven't really done enough damage at this early stage to uh, to warrant any uh, any of these positional plays they're making. And Oops have wrapped around the island as well. They have full control of that part of the map, and they can push forward as well. And the only cover that really remains here for Strong Siemma is this rock you see right in front of you and the lower part of the map in the valley. They, there's nowhere that on the upper side where they're really safe at all to go, and they might find that out soon as Catch Me tries to poke around the corner. He does at least get a look there. Damnus is lit in that 110 E5. And there's a couple uh, Object 140s actually moving up for Strong Siemer now. They might even try to get rid of Insane, get get him off the map early on. But Speed does finally drop on the top of that hill to Insane. So he's been completely cancelled out by that piece of artillery. But Insane now knows that there are a couple of tanks getting close here. He's going to set up and even try and get involved in this one now if his reload is kind enough to him. And he's not lit yet either. So that's an important fact. Yeah, he's got like two or three bushes in front of him. So he's fine. They'll be needing to get pretty close, like maybe 60, 70, 80 meters before they find them, maybe even 50 meters. So Oops now pushing around, and this actually might work out for very very nicely for them. When Insane gets a reload, he will surely be able to connect one of these two shells or will get very close to, and that will uh, open up for the rest of his team I to mean, do those, the damage. Yeah, sorry, like you said, I don't want to cut you off, but both those tanks aren't really going that far. They're just moving back and forth, and Ahiliak is punished for his foolishness there. He backs down. He's a one-shot. Hunter's Zord is also very low. Insane revealed himself by taking that shot, so he may even die for that, but having completely cancelled out one tank and so much damage towards Ahiliak, he's got to be happy here. But going up a little bit closer to the rock side means that it might be harder for those 62 ways to fire on him. And now Oops are on the move. They they, seem, they sense that they have an advantage here. There's a few tanks that are quite low. Ahoyek drops. Genghis is going to 1v1 towards Hunter's Orb. But he's got to connect these shots. He bounces one. The hard head of the 140 can make it a little bit tricky. And this is a strange, strange move from that man. Very strange. He should have just pushed all the way down on the bottom of the hill. Then he couldn't get killed. But I think he might have got double tracked. 
and uh, couldn't really do much about it. Insane's going to make a shot across, does hit him nicely onto Andre. Damnus finally takes care of Hunter Sword, and clearly, you know, Oops are ahead in this game. Andre does take down Insane finally, but. I think, you know, Oops have the better positions. Yeah, the damage has been done by Insane as well. Who'd be happy with that? Three solid hits going out and one finish, of course, on that RU251. Andre forced right on back here. Gucci on catch me there as well. But strong Siema, I mean, they have the health, but now it's a 3v3 situation. The problem is that Gucci is low. If they focus fire correctly, Andre as well is a one shot. He drops down, but Silence is punished for that one. A couple double tabs coming in from those E50Ms. But Invictus and Fussy Eater are just around the corner. And catch me as well, continuing to take damage. Now, Oops just going to shield each other up, try and uh, you know, avoid taking too much damage, try and cancel out any focus fire attempts coming out here from Strong CM, and it's put working perfectly as well. There he goes, catch me, he drops down, and Victor's picks him up. Shuroids is on his own in that T62A, and Oops are looking a lot better here as well. I really have to give it to them. I think they had the better idea here and the better positioning. I mean, when it came to the execution, losing Genghis when they did wasn't great, but they can clean up here. Yeah, I mean, Oops probably should have just gone around that corner um, just charged around the corner and took taking care of those two E50Ms. Those E50Ms were in the best position they could have really hoped for. Frontly to, to those tanks. Obviously, it could bounce a few shells for that. 2,050 HP as well. But uh, oops, maybe, you know, so far ahead at that point, it didn't really matter. And they do manage to pick up that win quite successfully. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, in, I have to say, I, I definitely give it to Insane there. He, he was the one who made it all work for them. Second highest damage, he had 2.9k. Biggest point is that he took care of speed on the hill, taking care of some good damage onto those uh, onto those Object 140s and then onto Ojek and his T62A. That's the three things he needed to do. Did them perfectly, and you know both teams have been picking up artillery, and it just seems to be whoever uses it more effectively wins around. Full credit to Insane. He fired four shots. And he hit four shots. Yeah. In an artillery, it's not easy to do. You know, it is not easy to do. Uh, I guess it was made a little bit easier in part by uh, some of the static positioning that we were seeing coming out from Strong CM. But he was threatened at some points as well. Insane had to turn his attention and sort of actually move his tank and realize that there were some tanks actually coming a little bit closer to him from the valley. And he still managed to put that pain down across to them as well. So, I mean, we've been saying it for a while. Saw it last season as well. He's an excellent artillery player here. And you've got you've to think that Oops really played well around that. You know, they had full control of that side of the map. So it would be very, very hard to threaten Insane in his position. Yep. And as a result, having all the high ground, it meant that, I guess, that um, obviously... Oh, God. Oops. Uh, no, sorry. Strong couldn't really move forward with a lot of confidence. So they had to stay put and just allow themselves to get shot to pieces. Exactly. I mean, I think Strong CMO with going to that lower ground... For some reason, not taking down Genghis in that batch yet. I mean, they could have tracked him or just done some good damage and maybe even just gone across. But yeah, I think really well played by Oops. Um, Strong Team just not managing to to uh, exchange effectively, being perhaps a little bit scared of a you know the the kind of passive play we've seen from from teams in the uh, defensive side where they put some tanks where Fussy Eat and Damnus is to make sure that if the team just pushes straight across the middle, they'll be a uh, very uh, very hard to. Um, to take down and very easy to get shot. So, I don't know. I think that's a, a solid play by Oops. I think at this point, I mean, you're against three versus two. Like, just send your, your Object 140s forward. So you've got two STBs in the background. There's no need to go for these frontal exchanges. That's what the, uh, the E50M does best. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's our first cliff round done here. And Strong CM has started this one off looking a lot stronger. Really, they did. We were thinking, all right, this is this is good. They seem to have the measure of oops there. But first, going on to Prohorovka, didn't really work out for them. And now on towards Cliff as well, which, if I'm not mistaken, is actually uh, the choice of oops as well. I think uh, the, the, the team that chooses second gets to pick two uh, the, the the second and third maps. Yeah. So exactly. I mean, this is good for this is kind of good for Oops if they can weather the storm a little bit uh, and get through that first map. And they didn't really obviously they lost both of those ones, but they come back now as well. It's good. It won't win them the game. That's the thing. They still need to win a round in one of Strong Sam's maps to actually take things away here. But momentum is important in this one as well, and the mental game as well. To come away with four rounds from these two middle maps would be very very good for them. Yeah, for sure. I think this is um, a comeback here from Oops. We have had a quick restart though. Um, obviously, some issues. One of the two teams, not sure exactly what happened there. But yeah, I mean, Cliff, it's been backwards and forwards. I thought, you know, after those first two rounds, we saw, um, we, we'd, I thought we'd saw maybe a strong CMA just coming away with a, a clean victory, like a 5-1, five, 5-2. Five, five, but I think Oops are now in a good position. They've got a couple of rounds under the belt, a couple of solid rounds under the belt as well. So strong CMA have to steady themselves. Um, I think, you know, now they're on the defensive side, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Doesn't look like gone for any artillery. To me, it looks like they got with the three E50Ms uh, and a pretty aggressive lineup to go forwards. Absolutely, of course. Uh, 
still not convinced about the E50Ms really from what we've seen uh, in the past. I mean, we, we, we talked about it the first time we saw Cliff. We said it's quite strange we see so many of these tanks who normally should be sitting back and doing a bit more sniping. Their armor not overly durable, not maybe a tank that you want to come forward and brawl with. I mean, has your opinion about them in this situation changed at all since the start of the season? Or, uh, you know, teams just going with them um, for the same reason they did in the first place, just to snipe? Well, it is. The armor is durable from the front. I think that's maybe one of the main reasons. I mean, 2,050 hit points... As long as you don't get shot in the turret, um, and the turret is very hot, very small, so it's yeah. hard to hit. Um, that frontal armor can bounce a lot. Um, it's extremely um, tough. Uh, the gun is not too bad. It's about seven and a half seconds reload for 390 damage. It does the job. And also, you know, ramming damage is also very effective in the E50M. So gun depression, not great, of course, being a German tank. But, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles. Sometimes you have to just deal with that. And uh, good players will always find a way around that kind of issue. Well, we're definitely not going to see them go up on the hill here on Cliff. That's uh, definitely one thing for sure. So, oops, on the attacking side here as well. Uh, they they look confident here as well. I, I really do think so. I think sometimes their execution doesn't always hold up. It's sort of mid-round and some mistakes are made, but they seem to be able to recover them fairly well. And it's off the back of what they've done early in the round as well to ensure them that good little start. Yeah, three E50 M's here coming out for Strong Emma, making their way towards the middle. And Object 140 for Oops has been flexed around the side, and they're going to try and put Damnus up on this hill. A little bit risky from him. He's been spotted and hasn't seen anything yet. So there we go. A couple of lives from the E50s. They're going to have a setup here. Might actually be a full-scale brawl here. Strong Sierra. Looks like they want to keep coming forward here as Ahoyek does take a big amount of damage. Fussy to firing towards him as well. He's low, very low. Invictus, a little bit of a subject of scrutiny right now, but look at Stu Roids and Duck of Death on the hill. They're not actually shooting each other. They're on opposite teams. They're right next to each other and they don't really care about each other. This is good damage though from um, from Strong CM. I mean, they're clearly ahead right now. They're doing so much work. The E50Ms have been bouncing a lot of shells from the front. That initial burst just went straight the way of Oops. Uh, Genghis doing good work from the background. Damn, is finding some kills as well, but Dunker Death now completely locked down. <laughs> now Steroids decides to deal with the guy right next to him and then pick him off there. Good focus fire from Strong CM. Much stronger performance from them than what we've seen earlier on. Andre takes a little bit of damage here. And you see Damnus is still up on the hill as well. So it can harass, but soon those guns will be turning in his direction as well. No one is safe forever now. And Stu Rhodes as well isn't looking towards him. Interesting, you can see just how disciplined Strong CMR are on their focus, so they can be next to an enemy tank and still ignore it and go for the tanks that really matter. Yeah, but Strong CMR, they, they got a good initial play, but now they don't really seem to know what to do. Damnus is going to eventually fall, though, um, to uh, one of these players as Andre Speed Goes down to catch me, actually, in the background in the E50M. So Insane and Genghis probably did a lot of work here. Probably did most of the damage um, of Oops, but maybe just not enough. Yeah, that's right. Only 2v4 as well. Very, very hard when your enemy has twice the amount of guns to Why isn't aim at just you? push? I mean, you should just push and kill Insane. One shot and a ram would be able to take him down. Andre pushing as well. Speed just seems to want to sit back and play the passive game of the E50. Yeah, a lot of bounces from Insane there as well, but there's so many shots coming at him that eventually he's going to have the drop. Seems like Genghis can't really do too much. He's, that seems like Genghis' third shot he's missed from sitting out the back there as well. So maybe a better chance for him would have been to push forward. He tried to snipe, tried to use the distraction. He gets Amarak there by speed. And Strox here might make it three apiece there as well. Definitely seems like they're a little bit more suitably geared towards those brawls. Yeah, I mean, perfect lineup for them. Their choice is really good on the E50M. Um, perfect start. Um... No, I guess Ojek not receiving too much damage wasn't great, but I mean, as soon as you had that situation where you had the the Object 140 and uh, Genghis out of the situation, kind of, I mean, Genghis' necess necess necessity, but Ojek in the 140, um, not Ojek, so I think it was, I'm not sure exactly who it was, maybe Invictus in the 140 outside of that uh, brawl, that gave the E50N so much more HP and firepower and, and damage that they can actually uh, provide that, um, yeah, I mean, they had no chance. And also you saw... One of the players from Strong team had just come barreling through the middle and, uh, you know, just cutting oops in half. Yes, well, Strong Sierra now just deciding to dispense with the uh, pleasantries and not worry so much about maybe working around the caps and setting up. They just push straight on forward and definitely seem to work out for them. Defensive teams actually don't mind doing that a little bit on Cliff here and credit to them obviously making that three and three. So basically both of these teams have won, have gone two zero on their maps and now at least Strong Sierra are picking up a round on Oops's map. So yeah. going to theirs, I mean, this is not bad for them. They'd be happy with this. It does put them with a slight edge, I'd like to think, going to the map of their choice next, which to my understanding is going to be Himmelsdorf. So, yeah. I mean, there you have it. I mean, this is definitely a staple in the diet of Strong Siema uh, last season. Things are a little bit different now, but their style kind of changed that much as well as what they like to go for. Um, I've always preferred to see them in, in these city sort of situations. Yeah, I think so. I mean, 
I will have to see. I mean, this it's it's going to be an interesting match here. But uh, looking at the um, picks, Waffen well, Dragon E100, the first time I think we've seen that on this map before. IS7's FE FE215B. It's just a normal kind of tanks coming out from these two teams. Nothing spectacular. Uh, but T110E3 as well for um, Oops, as they are obviously on the defensive side. So, I mean, the kind of tactics we've seen successful uh, being successful on the attack has been, you know, either very concerted pushes over the hill into the base mm -hmm. or pushes along the eight line that have worked successfully by putting a tank uh, in a position where you can get some good and early damage. Also, you know, tanks uh, place towards that western side have been effective as long as you can stave off and you can win those hit advantages, you can get control of the middle area. So it's going to be interesting to keep your eye on there. Yeah, and we've also seen, yeah, like you said, teams just going straight towards the hill. Wombats on tanks did it to Strong Siemer, if you remember that as well. Strong Siemer lost both of their Himmelsdorf rounds against Wombats on tanks. Bunch of uh, E100s that Wombats used, three of yeah. them in fact, I think, plus an IS-7 or IS-4. Yep. And uh, they just went straight. It was like a hit squad. One to the other, to the other, to the other. Very much a straightforward affair here. But still, Strong Seamer have picked this map. They still feel confident on this one as well. And you, know, you shouldn't read too much into losing it against one of the best teams in Europe as well. All mats on tanks, very, very strong here. But yeah, lineup wise as well. Uh, E100, like you pointed out, should be interesting. There's FV215Bs are making their reappearance here as well. Obviously not expecting to see them at all really on Cliff being as slow and heavy as they are. Yep. But let's have a look at Himmelsdorf as well, for you who don't recall. Obviously that, the big square in the middle, no one really touches that unless they're going for proxy spots. That's where a lot of the action does happen, of course, through these little streets. North and Cap, West and Cap also a possibility if a team sets up fairly well. But a Waffentrager E100 always makes me feel like, oops, um... Uh, well, we saw Penta flex that actually between the Western Cap and actually back towards the middle, and it kind of got picked up here. But yeah, a good presence for Oops now on that Western side. Insane pushing forward. Yeah, Insane just getting the early spot in the AMX 1390. Oops with c complete control over that Western side at the beginning, of course. So a lot of teams, almost every single team, just going for this uh, initial play in, in case, you know, Strong Sierra decides to get that Western side in early. Uh, an early time. So, hill control by Strong Siemma also to be expected considering that the spawn positions are basically just at the bottom of the hill. Um, not even at the bottom, just halfway up. Yep. T62 up there, I think we'll, T62A up there, I should say, I think we'll probably see that for the majority of the match, obviously. That Russian medium tank with a very good turret can bounce a lot, could uh, provide some distractions. And this is playing out similarly to the match we've already seen. And uh, as the uh, kind of hit strike force of. Uh, Strong CMA just started to make their way from that eastern side towards the western side. All spotted by Insane now. Yeah, he's done well actually to light up Hunter's Ord and Catch Me has also been lit on the other side as well. So that was by the IS-7 being pushed into G3. Oops have a lot of information to work with and, you know, often what we see, we see some teams sometimes pull back when they gain information about uh, positioning of Strong CMA right now, but they're actually going to keep going forward. No, they're going back. Uh, oops. Oh, Strong Samer. Strong Samer going back. Yeah, I, I didn't word that very well, to be honest with you. But Oops pushing forward a little bit more on that western side here. And that's actually forcing, like you said, Strong Samer back maybe towards an eight line. They will have a bit to deal with there. There's an IS-7 position there. Um, and he wasn't lit, but he will be in a moment. Andre actually fairly low up there on the hill. So better back and forth. And maybe you try to challenge Damnus out there as well and come off second best. Yeah, so these FE215Bs we see down below now are just <coughs> ready and waiting for Hunter's Ord in the IS-7 and uh, Guzio in the fe 215 speed to push forward. I-7 obviously the fast tank will surge on ahead. Uh, they all get spotted on the cross though by uh, Daka Death sitting there in his hold down position. So yeah, I mean, this is just going to be an eight line push. This is going to be a push towards a cat. Somewhere there in the background is the T110 E3. That's just such a confusing sentence. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is going to be a classic push from Strong Schema. Execution has got to be on point. Damnus bounces one, he sends one back towards him, and I don't think Strong Seamer want to waste too much time trying to deal with the hull down IS-7. So they push up somewhere, he's in that classic little spot there in the window as well, which is going to be very, very, very difficult to deal with, but for the moment, he's going to be the only tank that's actually there. So he needs to hold Strong Seamer up for at least a little while as they push in. He can't do anything about the tanks capping from the south part. He really can't see towards them, but speed there on the seven line, he should be able to see. Somewhere just waiting here. Hasn't taken his shot, so being patient. Probably can't quite see that RU251 as he's probably right up against the wall on that northern street. But this capture's getting very, very, going very, very quickly here. And oops, a little bit slow to react. Yeah, for sure. But um, when they do, once they do react, hopefully they just get themselves together. Send the T110 E3 just in behind with a Waffentrager and then just come trundling around the corner and just blow Strong CM out of this uh, out of this planet. 
Well, that's exactly my, what might be happening here. The Wife of Prager is coming forward. Silence being lit and Damnus pushing around the corner now. But look at the firing squad sitting back there as well. The DFV 215Bs plus the IS-7. They're ready for a push around the corner here. Genghis gets hurt on the cross. He shoots towards Duroids and forces him off the cap there. So that pressure's been alleviated, at least for the moment. Speed's getting the heck out of Dodge. Genghis taking a lot of damage. Has done none to Duroids yet. He takes another shot. Bussy in coming around the corner on the Wife of Trager. He's doing some serious damage. But Catchme goes down as well. So far, so good for Oops. They've got to keep it up though now. Stroxyema just sort of drawing together with one another, trying to get those guns trained in the right directions, but Fasid does take down Gucci, or Hunter's Horde drops as well, Ahoyex trapped, he can't help out Steroids at all, he's right in the background, he's going to hope to fire towards somewhere, and somehow penetrates through the fun of that E3, but somewhere is almost off reload now as well, he's going to turn that big old gun towards one of those tanks, but you see Speed just trying to get around the side of him as well, he's been tracked up again, frustrating position to be in as a tank destroyer, and Fasid will go down as well, they know he's on reload, so they can put their attention towards somewhere, but it doesn't matter, Stroxyema just don't have enough tanks, they just don't have enough health points and the oops can push in and clean them up yeah this is this is game over from as soon as uh that's as soon as Strong Sierra pushed themselves behind that cap and uh, didn't have a good setup positions they were unsure of their position they were moving around the map and uh you know they weren't in a in a place to say okay we want to see in the cap we want to win it this way because with the t110 e3 with the weapon e100 just the 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 setup from from um, from Oops was a lot better just to come charging around corners and just to unload so much damage that you just simply couldn't sustain through it so what it looked like uh, in the early stage of that setup there is that Strong Sierra wanted to try and punish, obviously, Oops for coming across and, and forcing and pushing forward on towards that capture. Now, it didn't seem like they, they really were able to punish. They had two tanks that were pushed forward, and they had three sitting back towards the side, an IS-7 and two uh, FE-215Bs. Now, why does that not work out for them in this case? Well, they've got no other control over the map. I mean, the, as soon as you've got a team that's coming from two angles um, against less tanks, I mean, let's be honest, Andre and... Uh, uh, who was the other one? The one in the RU251 Speed. Andre and Speed were in the, the 251 C62A. They were in a different part of the map. They weren't in the, in the, in the equation at all. So yep. you're talking about a, five, a 7 versus 5 situation, two angles, better setup. I mean, 3.6k done by uh, Fuzzy Eaton is Waffen Target E100. So he can just go in, pump his uh, five shells out, and that's going to be really hard to sustain through. Then you got the T110 E3 bouncing, doing some good damage. And then Andre and Speed finally come into the game from behind about maybe 20 or 30 seconds too late. Yep. And uh, they do good damage. Um, Speed actually the highest uh, damage leader for strong CMO is 2.2k. But Andre is only 1.5k who received too much on the hill as well. So I think it's a bad timing there from Strong. Um, just let Oops just walk away with it. And Catch Me was left back as well on that uh, D line, I think, as well. Um, just to yep. watch any sort of flanking attempt here. This Catch Me here, perfect timing. So he is on his own here. Now, this is where the flank was supposed to come through. Now, as that tank, you should be holding Silence and Damnus up. Look at, look at what they can do towards uh, Strong CMO. They can pinch them so easily. Now, but there comes Duck of Death as well around the, the corner of that 39. Duck of Death insane even come from behind. I mean, yep. insane stuff. There's nothing there supporting any angle. I mean, Oops is coming from every single place. And then look at Fussy to just having a field day against these two. And he's not afraid to come forward as well. So the catch me goes down very, very quickly. And now the flank happens as well. So from behind, tanks are coming in. Strong Seema know that they need to push forward in a second. But from here, like a perfect pincer maneuver. The timing was good. I mean, Oops... Good on them for getting rid of Catch Me as quickly as they did. Because yeah. if they didn't do that, then things might have been a little bit different. Granted, the Waffenträger was still putting a lot of damage over towards them, but that's the way the cookie crumbles there as well. And uh, Strong Sierra just sort of caught out. So now they had to attack as well. They had to go aggressive here on this one. Double E100 coming out for them. Now 50B for Fussy Eater as well. And they're going with the 3090 from Honey. Yeah, so a pretty fast lineup. A lot of damage, um, as you would expect, but... Yeah, obviously the two E100s have been shown to be a decent tank on this map. See if it works out for, for uh, Oops this time round. They put the defensive round on the board, which is the easier round to do, to be fair to them. Uh, Strong CMO will obviously be wanting to do that as well. Um, bear in mind that Oops are on match point, so they only need to put together a half-decent tactic to beat what's been a pretty mediocre Strong CMO. Oh, I was wrong as well. Oops are on the attack side, not the defense. My screen is wrong. So... That was a very aggressive scouting run there from Speed. Did manage to reveal a few things. Honey, honey is lit. Gucho also lit as well. Now, Strong Seam are actually committing some tanks towards the aid line as well. They're not all over to the wards at one side. They're not leaving a tank back in the north. And that is an interesting setup from them, really. I'm not really sure what the plan is because they've got nothing on the D line, really. They're not trying to catch anyone pushing up. They haven't pushed anyone down to G3 either. So maybe they're just hoping to bully through with these E100s? 
Yeah, I mean the E one hundred is the eight line king because it can bounce a lot from the shot uh, from the side. So, Rip. Huntsall does receive a big shell there from uh, Huntsall does give out a big shell towards Genghis, but Genghis should be able to control that eight line. Problem is, of course, you know E one hundred not particularly accurate, so probably won't be able to find the the uh, IS sevens weak spots too um, reliably and. With those two E hundreds, they are slightly slower for sure. So, AMX thirty ninety obviously says to us that uh, perhaps uh, Oops is looking for that left side, maybe wanting to get control over that area and um, even get a cap on the way. And speed is just being destroyed, silence by silence. And uh, first kill does go towards Oop. Good start. Yeah, speed really doesn't want to be going down in that kind of situation here. Strong CM haven't committed enough towards the western side for him to be so far forward, really. And well, silence able to get the pick on him. And oops, well, it's a good start for them there to get rid of speed. Less harassment coming in from the sides and flank here, so they're working with these E100s. They do a lot with them, to be honest. I mean, they are pretty, we've seen them be pretty amazing. In fact, I think it was Ural Fish actually playing an E100 on this map, just dominating that eight line. Like you said, E100 very, very good in that scenario. I think he thrashed an IS-7 in that, or not an IS-4, sorry, in that situation, so. It has been done before. Now they're pushing across the field as well. They've got, they, they know, I guess, they know that Strong CMA have very, very little on the west. So this is actually uh, a viable plan for them. Hunter's Lord takes a massive beating. Two shots in towards the side of him. Andre as well taking some damage. Oh, this is not good at all. A good setup in the middle of the map here. But now it might go a little bit against Oops because they're out in the open. Damnus takes a big hit. He's trying to get out of the firing run. And there you go. Genghis just gets absolutely nuked down. Oops with a very strange move to go across the map there. But Andre is taking good damage. Duck of Death is punishing here. But I still don't get that move across the middle. No, it's a very hard move to make happen, but this is the comeback from Oops. They're doing great damage now because they have the surround on Strong CMO. They can actually sustain. And the E100, yes, okay, one of them went down, but you know, they have a lot of HP to play around with. But Lucio might take down Danos, doesn't actually do it, and he just survived for one more shell. Insane is there as well. Uh, maybe his turret actually taken out for a moment there. We saw him pointing in the wrong direction. He'll get that one turned around eventually. Damnus forced to go up against Guccio. Duck of Death can't finish Hunter's Lord. Hunter's Lord can make him pay dearly for that one. Damnus should be dropping in just a moment. Strong Seema though, have already lost so much health points. They've lost so many tanks already that it's just a matter of time. Insane is going to go looking for Catch Me. He doesn't really mind how much damage he takes here as well because there's already been so much put across the line and Damnus survives long enough to take Guccio to critical health. That shot towards him from an opposition FB215B was enough to kill him. But that will be Silence getting involved there. Catch Me, last man. And Steroid, sorry, is the last man. And Oops have done it. I mean, it's messy. It was interesting. Some... Uh, Special tactics, we'll call them here, coming out from Oops in the way that they moved across with those E100s, but such a robust tank as well. And Strox Emma just had a bizarre defensive setup. I don't really understand what the plan was there. I mean, this is, you know, 800 efficiency opinions coming across the table here. But, I mean, what are your thoughts about how the way Strong Emma set up in the start of that one? Well, Strong Emma were, were expecting, you know, a full push down the eight lane with the E100s first. You know, that's what they're setting up for. But um, I think pretty early on, Oops realized that those, uh, those tanks were set up there, which, of course, you know, gave them so much flexibility elsewhere in the map. Once you have four tanks in that position... Yep. You can take care of the left side, which they did very nice to his speed, and then took care of, uh, you know, the 50B took it down to a one shot so he couldn't peek very effectively. And then, you know, the E100 just goes straight into the middle. You know, one of them gets taken down, Genghis gets taken down, but they actually do so much damage yep. at, at, at the get go because Strong him a three bunch between two small buildings. It was great. And then Guccio, you know, failing to take down, um, I think, Damnus, Damnus there in E100, yeah. there in E100, even though he is a one shot. You know, two or three shells out came came out from uh, Guccio before you know he finally fell. So great work individually, and yeah, just too many angles for Strong Siemens to deal with. Well, we thought that might go a little bit longer seeing these two teams, but it was Himmelsdorf that Oops came out on top, and that's an impressive result from him. A, definitely a definitive one for them going forward. They've got to be happy with that. Starting themselves as at least that sort of mid-table team coming into the league for the first time. Got to be happy with that for your uh, rookie season or your first two rounds in. Having a tough match, of course, at the start of things here, but getting to test their medal against an opponent of, of arguably similar skill, or at least ostensibly similar, good work to them. Melly, we haven't got to chat to you a little bit uh, much during this game, unfortunately. It's been uh, very much back and forth stuff here as well. Obviously, um, the voting long since closed, and uh, Strong CM are actually all the support behind them, actually, all for naught. Well, uh, until the second map uh, ended, they were uh, highly favored by the community at home. Mm -hmm. And after the Facebook vote closed, I can only rely on the Twitter co uh, yes. vote as well, uh, of course. And they're actually, um, they fell behind. 
they dropped down on um, 47 percent at the end and uh, well now back up on 49 which is still less than 50 sure. it means oops it was favorite um, and after I think it was just a, a match point um, map we saw on stream currently and the the oops um, hype train just went off so people like what they see from the sides of oops yeah, well, so do we. Yeah, I think right. we've, uh, you Die know. <laughs> Random strong CMO wipe down. Yep. <laughs> That's a bit BM, isn't it, Mr. Producer Man? <laughs> um, okay, so, I mean, well, I mean, community like what they're seeing. I think we are too as well. I think yeah. uh, those last couple of maps were quite convincing yeah. from Oops. Um, yeah, I mean, strong CMO started strong and then things sort of started to turn around a little bit. Cliff was a bit funny, but. Mm. Yeah, I think, you know, Oops. Solid Excuse individual me. performances. I th thought, you know, Genghis with that one versus three was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Damnus, good individual form, performance, 3.6k in that U100 at the end. Good uh, good play as well, some good tactics. We saw that on Cliff. Um, they knew what they wanted to do. They took it when they wanted it. And uh, I think at the end, uh, maybe Strong CMA beat themselves more than Oops beat them. But um, yeah, I think we saw the kind of cornerstones of World of Tanks uh, professional play somewhere in the lineup for Oops. And I think they need to develop that and they will be a successful team. Well, we'll have to see now what they're going to produce for us in the next few weeks. And quickly, a quick apology to you guys at home. I am a little bit unwell at the moment, so if you're hearing some very mild coughing in the background, it is me. Just Stop trying to, uh, just trying to. No, Ollie's, Ollie's doing well. He watches for when I cough, and he just cuts in with some analysis at some point. So, the tag <laughs> team into here. I used to with Lauren. She always does it as well. She's got, she's got pretty bad coughs. Yeah, yeah during the winter months usually. I'm not, I'm not used to the, uh, the cold. I think that must be it. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be off to a break before we jump into our last game of the night, and this is going to be interesting. Utopia versus Wombats on tanks. Great stuff already we've seen from the Wombats Utopia. A little bit average against Castor Crew earlier on the week so it's time for them to see if they can prove to us that they still deserve to be that top six team. We'll be back soon of course. Don't go anywhere and stay tuned.